Cramps the curse of suck my cock. Gonna take blue shit to a rock. Gonna make mountains of paper mache. Gonna glue shit together all day. Hey everybody, welcome back to Crafts with Curzer. Uh, today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, you hear me talk a lot in my videos about uh, getting stuff at the Dollar Tree or uh, inexpensive crafting. And today I'm going to show you how I do some of that. Uh, so mostly the stuff I get from the Dollar Tree is pretty simple stuff. Uh, i got a few examples here for you. We've got these black rocks from the floral section and they're great for doing little scenes uh, like the rubble on top of the buildings and even rocks out in fields when you're doing small dioramas. Along with those you can also get the sand. I get the black sand because uh, it's pretty much pre-shaded. All you have to do is highlight it. And then, you know, if you're going to mix up some glue and water, they have spray bottles. Alright. They have paint brushes like this that come in packs of three, and that's great for dry brushing on a huge diorama. This is exactly the same brush that I used to dry brush that whole, all the uh, diorama over there that we've been working on the past couple episodes. Super glue. I mean... This stuff, you go to Walmart, three, four, five dollars. You get two bottles of it for one dollar at the Dollar Tree. Why wouldn't you take advantage of a deal like that? I mean, you can't pass it up. Twine. These little rolls of twine, you get three of these for a dollar. I've done, uh, on one of my dioramas, I used this. I just split it open and added some of uh, the moss that I had chopped up and glued it to it and used it as vinage on a building. It worked great. Speaking of the moss, this is a little container of it that I keep chopped up pretty fine. Uh, this is actually just a big bag of floral moss that I tossed in the blender. You can get the green and the brown already colored for you. Reading glasses. As y'all can tell, I'm not exactly the youngest person in the world, but you can get one, two, and three power reading glasses at the Dollar Tree if you didn't already know that. And that's great for me uh, when I start to get tired after doing building for a little while. My eyes will start to uh, get tired and the small details will go blurry and instead of using a magnifying a magnifying glass, I'll pop those on and it's just right there. And as long as I keep it within a certain distance of my face, I'm good. LED Christmas light. LED Christmas lights. These are gonna go great in the diorama. I'll be using them for explosions and Maybe even light up the bottom floor of one of the buildings or something like that. Uh, PVA glue. This is eight ounces of PVA glue for a dollar. It's like two dollars for this at Walmart usually. Spray adhesive. It's basically just watered down PVA glue, but uh, you know, if, if you don't feel like mixing it up yourself, you can go and grab that. They also have uh, bottles of Mod Podge in the same size as these uh, 50 cent Walmart paints. Loose powder makeup. As long as you don't get the shimmer, it's great for dust on vehicles and other dioramas. And last but not least, from another one, from the makeup section, makeup and nails, sanding sticks. It's just easy to sand with, works great. And uh, I guess now we're going to get into another type of budget modeling, I guess you would say. 
budget crafting. Uh, what we're going to do is found this old stereo in a closet in my house. Uh, I guess the previous owner had it and they had asked to leave a few things behind and this just so happened to be one of them. It doesn't work, but I'm sure there's going to be something inside here that would work great with a mecha diorama or mecha in general. Uh, so let's crack it open and see what we can find. slider open here. Okay. I already see a few things we can use. Here's the big stuff we can use. These will be great. I guess we'll start by disassembling the back plate and then pulling out the boards and we'll get started from there and go on. This is going to look great in the background of Pardon my belly in most of these shots, uh, didn't really notice it while I was doing the filming. But uh, we're just going for a rough and tumble way of getting this apart. I'm not trying to save anything to use it other than for crafts, so I'm just ripping into it.
All right, so we got lots of great parts here. Some cool little areas to make little backgrounds. I've got this that I kind of, I really want to use this on something. Uh, I haven't decided what it is yet, but these guys are always great. I mean, you need barrels and all kinds of stuff like that anywhere, and especially these little guys. They do really great for stuff like that as well. Mobs. You can always find a use for mobs. Um, these switches kind of look like gun barrels. Pew, 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 pew. This has a cool effect that can be used as like some kind of gimmick in something later on. And as always, more little barrels and maybe little storage devices that I can lay around. Large tanks to be used for things. Just different shaped things that are all great like that. There's not a lot to be had out of this. I'm not really... I might grab a couple of these eventually or just trash it. I'm not sure yet. Same with most of this and the frame. The, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with this and I've already got enough of a mess in here as it is. I need to PM my whole workstation badly. In this case, once I get this popped out of here. Uh, actually, I may keep this whole thing because after I get that popped out of there, I can actually, instead of just popping it out, I can probably cut that down through there straight with my jigsaw and end up with two diorama bases out of just this one piece here. I'm going to hold on to this. Wires are always good to have around for models and modeling. I mean, you can't have a wrecked mech without wires coming out of it. We've got all different sizes. Now. Also got this. This is one of my favorite things to come out of there. I mean, if this doesn't look like some kind of space bazooka cannon, I don't know what does. I mean, I'll have to trim off some of the wires and clean up the glue on it, but this is going to be great. I'll probably have that mounted like somewhere in a, in a mountain or on top of something. It may even make it into the big diorama I'm building right now. Who knows? All right, so what we've got here, we've got this background base. We uh, painted the base black on it, just gloss black. And now, to make this good, fun diorama shelf piece that we can sit up, what we're going to do, make an old high-grade kit. We've got old runners, toss in there. We've got so many runners, we can probably do quite a few layers of this, hopefully. Different coffees, 
doggy's body. Oh, these will work great for something. Shield. Rifle. All of these little things can be incorporated in there very easily. Those. The moths will pop them out. This wing zero is a little bashed up, and I believe this may be the diorama for him. A little bit of space battle damage. Hey, all right, so we've got this base blocked in. We're going to take these runners and make colony out of the old stereo parts, old runners, the casing for the stereo, and see what we can do with any other little bits of uh, trash that I can put in there. This is going to be basically uh, totally just what I have laying around build, and hopefully something cool comes out of it. We'll see. I got started here trying out a few little things and just decided that this wasn't the way I wanted to go. I thought it was at first, but it was just going to be too much of a hassle and I didn't think it would look right. So I grabbed this bucket from the Dollar Tree and decided to tear it to pieces. Let's make the outer shell of a smaller part of the colony. And look like it's been destroyed and just kind of hanging in space here. That's the plan. We're going to black all this out again with matte black. It's going to be the cloth that we used. And then we'll be able to start on the next part. Here I'm assembling some popsicle sticks and making them into an IB sort of structure that I can glue in and use to make it look like part of something that's rounded and blown up in space. Alright, now I'm going to start putting all this together. I'm going to glue down this hot glue. It took quite a while to cool down on this. I think it's because I've got the really high temp down. And it's a little different than the low temp down. It dries a little slow, but it also melts the PLA. Using some of these circuits, uh, bits of these runners, and popping it all together. Now we're going to make this uh, a little more three-dimensional, trying to make it look like it's a full piece and have a double wall outside for more protection. But apparently it didn't protect this one. I was trying to use some thin down black uh, paint here. 
but it just wasn't working. It was too thin and I stick to this because I didn't prime it. I'm out of primer and I didn't feel like I'm going to get it since this is a budget deal. This is pure budget using just old, almost empty things that I have laying around mixed in that red Christmas lights at the Dollar Tree so I took some wire and built a little circle frame got some cotton swab or cotton balls and used the old pieces of a uh, the tall geese Gundam that were spare parts for different builds in the uh, box so I'm just taking it and gluing it all together here and trying to make it I'm well, just making it fun I tried super glue at first, but it wasn't sticking to the cotton balls. The hot glue works best if you unroll them. You have to unroll the uh, cotton balls, and that helps most with them. Time for a test. Let's see what it looks like with the lights out. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. I'm really proud of this one. I never thought it would look this good. We got the parts of it coming out of the explosion. I didn't have any legs, but you know, we got the body, we've got the thrusters, all that. Now we're gonna put it in its temporary home, just on top of my little mini fridge here in the here in the dungeon where we do the craft show my basement uh, we got it set up there and I built a little stand out of uh, sprues trying to hold it up there and I'm trying to glue that onto the fridge but it just ended up melting the sprue in half and it fell off so I just took some wire and hung it from the ceiling because that worked It doesn't look the best here with uh, with the light colors in the background, but I think once I get it in a, a dark bookcase, maybe in my shelf upstairs, uh, it might look a little bit more realistic like it's in space. I think it turned out really great for uh, what I spent on it, which is maybe five bucks not counting you know the old model that I had that I'd shot fireworks at just trying to test effects and the other one that was just spare pieces and then the old sprues I, I don't think that cost me really anything the uh, case was the old stereo that came with the house it just it just all came together Hey guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, we, had a, we had a lot of fun on this one. Used a lot of the old uh, techniques that we had used in the uh, previous ones. We used uh, super glue and glue sticks mainly for uh, connecting it all. We used a lot of trash. Uh, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this the way that I wanted to, but it turned out better than I thought it would, especially for the limited resources that I was using for this one. Uh, basically cheap model paint watered down for the airbrush and the airbrush was, is an uh, inexpensive eBay job that it was like $35 for the brush and the compressor combined. So it, you know, it's well within the range of a, uh, 
beginner modeler that wants to get into airbrushing. I mean, it's not the best airbrush in the world, but it does the job pretty good. You just gotta learn how to adjust it and get get your flow right and get your mixtures on your paint right. Uh, so, uh, as always, like, subscribe, tell your friends, um, share it. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, thanks again to Son of Mouse for the music that I've been using here in the last couple. And hopefully we'll have some more to do soon. Uh, see you next time.